When we speak of heavy oils and light oils, we are really referring to their viscosity or resistance to shear. Now, the tangential stress of shear is also confused with the normal stress of adhesion, which causes wetting. As we shall soon see, the fact that mercury does not wet the glass stirring rod does not mean that it has no viscosity. Whether a fluid wets a boundary or not, the interaction of the respective molecules is such that there can be no slip either between the fluid and the boundary or between different parts of the fluid. Thus, if one boundary is moved parallel to another, a viscous fluid contained between them will undergo a continuous shear or angular deformation as delineated by the velocity gradient. This is known as couette flow. If we were to measure the force per unit area tau required to move the one boundary or to hold the other stationary, its ratio to the rate of deformation would be a direct indication of the dynamic viscosity mu of the fluid. Lines of hydrogen bubbles produced along a fine wire by periodic electrolysis of a glycerin water solution show the typical couette velocity distribution. A device using the couette principle for the measurement of viscosity is formed by two nested cylinders so closely spaced that their curvature can be neglected. By moving the outer cylinder at any desired speed and by measuring the force on the inner one through the torque on the suspension, the viscosity can be determined. Here the fluid is water and the prevailing speed produces a certain deflection of the inner cylinder. Now the fluid is mercury which is seen to be more viscous than water, in that even a lower speed would still produce a greater deflection. Finally, the fluid is simply the air of the atmosphere, which is also seen to be viscous, though very much less so than either water or mercury. If the measurements of shearing stress and rate of angular deformation were plotted against each other, for what is known as a Newtonian fluid, such as water, mercury, or air, all points would fall on a straight line, the constant slope of which would represent constancy of the viscosity. A line with a steeper slope would thus indicate a fluid with a higher viscosity, and a line with a less steep slope, one with a lower viscosity. A non-Newtonian fluid, on the contrary, is one for which the plotted points follow a curve rather than a straight line. A good example is a liquid suspension of finely divided solids. Some of the new dripless paints illustrating this behavior to an extreme degree. Such a non-Newtonian fluid is characterized by a curve which indicates an initial stress at zero rate of deformation and a viscosity that decreases with increasing deformation rate. 